video demonstrates how to protect an application created with FileMaker on Mac or Windows. We'll start by launching the Quick License application where we'll define the type of license that we want to apply to the application. Here we've created a product license and within the license dialog we're going to indicate that this is a product license that once activated will never time out run forever on that computer and allow it to be reactivated again on the same computer if the user would choose to. Uh, we've set a few other options uh, on the activation panel, we've set activation required, and just to make it easy for testing, we'll just have the activation code be the same as the request number shown in the uh, initial activation dialog that's presented on launch. We'll go ahead and uh, generate the ticket file for this license. The ticket file is a platform neutral file shown here that can be applied to our FileMaker application on either Mac or Windows. You can see we've copied the ticket file that defines our license into the folder holding the FileMaker Pro application. In the case of a standalone application built with FileMaker, you would just put the ticket file in the folder holding that application. In the extensions folder, we've also added the uh, plugin that provides access to the Quick License runtime. Verify that our plugin has been properly installed in FileMaker Pro. We'll bring up the Preferences dialog, and on the Plugins panel, we can see our plugin is installed and checked. We'll then open up a test application that's included with the plugin, so we can send a simple command to the plugin. And here's our test application. We'll type the command into the request field. And we'll click the send button, which sends that text command to the runtime and the response is shown in the response field. Let's send a different type of command. Most applications will just send a single command to the runtime to activate and validate the license, but there is several dozen commands available in, in the runtime to implement more advanced licensing uh, features. Let's take a quick look at how the send command actually sends that command to the runtime. So we'll open in layout mode, we'll uh, double click on the send button. We can see that the text from the request edit field is sent to a function called send QLRT and the response string is stored in the response field. A simple script is used to bind a defined license to an application. We have a, an example application here, which we'll go ahead and open. And when we do that, we'll see that on first launch, an activation dialog is presented. The user will need to enter an appropriate activation code to activate the license the first time. And thereafter, on each launch, the license will be validated and the application will, be, will immediately begin to run. If the user chooses to activate later or enters an invalid code, an error message is presented and the application simply quits. To make it easy for testing purposes, we've just made it so that the activation code is the same as the request number, which we'll go ahead and activate now. And now we see that the application is now running. In a real environment, the request number will be sent by the user to the vendor. The vendor will put it into quick license and return back the activation code or the process can be fully automated with a serial number so that on first launch, the user enters a serial number received during the purchase process and is automatically activated through an online activation server like Safe Activation. Standalone application, the script isn't viewable or editable by the user, but in our development environment, we can take a look at the uh, script under file options, script triggers, we see that after the first window is open, our license script will run. And the license script essentially uh, has a couple of lines where it sends a command. This is the actual command that's sent to the runtime, which binds the application to a particular named license. And the response that comes back, we extract out a return code. If it's a negative return code, an error message has already been presented to the user by the uh, quick license runtime and the application simply quits. In this video, we've shown how you can use the combination of the quick license and FileMaker plugin products to protect a license, any kind of FileMaker, Mac or Windows application. 
you can apply product, trial, try-by, subscription, or floating licenses to that application using either a manual or an automated online activation process. To learn more, go to www.excelsoftware.com, click on the Protect and License button, and you'll be taken to a screen where you can learn about other aspects of the licensing process or watch some of the online videos.